<clears throat> and to you too. How's uh, how's the COVID? Were were you in Mexico City? Well, I think like everywhere, but just like resisting and stay at home and everything. So that's the thing, right? Uh, good, Bill, good. so welcome to a brunch. This is a brunch show always between breakfast and lunch. So we always start talking about morning, morning routine. For example, my morning it starts with oatmeal. I love oatmeal. <laughs> What about you? I want to know how is the morning in the life of uh, of Goldberg? Fuzzy and early. Um, <clears throat> I think within the first the first ten minutes of me waking up, I have uh, about a half pound of bacon and twelve eggs getting ready to be consumed by me so that uh, I can start my day off with about 2,000 calories, that, and a protein shake. And <clears throat> something long, along okay. those lines is, a, is, a, uh, is, is every single day routine. My God. Wait, wait a moment. You said uh, early. What time is early? 6.30, 6 a.m. Okay, wow, it's early. Is it 12? 12 eggs? Oh, yeah, that's just in the morning. I, I eat about two dozen a day. What? Yeah. It's not, if you eat the, if you eat the yellow part, uh, it's not the healthiest, but I eat the egg whites. So I have like two yolks with, with uh, a dozen egg whites. So. Oh, oh, my God. Okay, I need to translate for the, for the fans, okay? Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Gente, aquí tenemos algo excepcional. Yo le pregunté que cómo era una mañana de golver y él me dijo, a ver, me gusta despertarme temprano, pero aguanta. Me como 12, 12 huevos, bueno, o sea, 12 yemas, 12 claras de huevo en la mañana y otras 12. O sea, se come 24 huevos por día. Eso la verdad es que es un montón. Ustedes ahí en casita no lo hagan si no son una superestrella porque eso no va a estar nada bien. And, and now, Bill. You challenged the WWE champion and he accepted. So basically it's official. Now, what do you expect from Drew McIntyre? Well, first he has to get over COVID <clears throat> and uh, hopefully he does that. As a human being, I have to be, yeah. you know, very understandable and considerate about somebody's uh, livelihood and about their, their health. But yeah. um, once he gets over COVID, I will take care of him like I took care of most everybody that I faced back in the day. The fact is, he's the new breed. I'm the old breed. And let's see what he's got. It's, uh, it's old versus new. And uh, I may be up there in age, but I am still Goldberg. So let's see what the new breed has to offer compared to the old guard. I'm very curious to see. Now, I mean, and I have nothing but respect for him, but... I don't think he has the respect for, for us older generation, uh, along with uh, the, probably the, the bulk of the group of, of wrestlers with him. They don't really understand that we still have a lot left to offer. Okay. Okay. So, a ver, este, aquí la pregunta fue acerca de que, bueno, que qué esperaba uh, del campeón eh, de Drew McIntyre, ahora que, que, que van a estar juntos. Y él dijo, bueno, primero que salga de la cuarentena, pero que básicamente una vez que esté bien, le va a enseñar lo que hacía en sus viejos tiempos. Y que le va a enseñar a respetar a las leyendas, porque no ha sido muy respetuoso con respecto a esto. And so, moving to another thing. Uh, we know about your passion for collecting and restoring cars. <laughs> I want to know, how many do you own? Oh, God. Uh, first of all, it's an addiction that's, that, that started when I played professional football. Um, so the wrestling business has helped uh, foster my addiction along, but it, it started way before I got into the business. Um, currently I have a, a thir 30 something cars, uh, you know, probably 37 cars. But, uh, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a passion of mine. It's uh, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, um, I fell in love with muscle cars and all of the cars that I couldn't have when I was a kid. Once I got into the NFL and got into wrestling, I was able to acquire those cars. And every time I, I take a ride in them and every time I see them, it reminds me of my childhood. So it's a very simple addiction. Okay. Okay. And, and now I want to know how many have you restored? 
Oh, oh, probably, probably upwards of 10, 10 to 12. Um, we're currently getting finished with two of them right now. I'm, I'm, uh, should be taking delivery hopefully soon. So, okay. um, hopefully okay. after I beat McIntyre and come home with the title, I'll have a new car waiting for me. Wow, we want to see that, please. You have to share with us. Absolutely. Perfect. And the last question. I want to know if you have um, any plans for racing. For racing? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No question. We have, uh, cross your fingers, we have a new television show coming out where um, if, if the competitors beat my group of racers, then ultimately they have to race against me. So not only will I answer your question and say, yes, I'll be racing, but I'll be doing it on television. Oh, my God. I want no, to see it. It'll be great. And we want this exclusive as well. Because you know that Latin America, we love you so much. And that would be amazing to see you racing. Congrats to Latin. Thank This you. Project will be amazing. A ver, aquí la pregunta, bueno, fueron varias preguntas. Gente, no sé si ustedes sabían, pero a Goldberg le encanta, le encanta, le encanta coleccionar eh, autos y restaurarlos. Y la primera pregunta fue que cuántos tenía. Y él me dijo, 30, 37 coches. Y yo que me emocionaba con mi bici. <ríe> y la segunda fue acerca de cuánto se ha restaurado y me dijo, pues más o menos como 10. Y la última, que creen? Fue que le dije, oye, ¿y no tienes algún planecito como para pilotear coches? Y nos dijo que sí y que va a tener un programa muy, muy cerca. O sea, un programa piloteando eh, autos. Ok, now, I want to know something about your life. Do you remember the exact moment when you realized that you wanted to be a superstar? Oh my gosh, well, it depends on, I guess, the definition of superstar is broad. Um, I, never, I never wanted to be a superstar. Okay. I always wanted to be someone who was respected, that was good at his job and set a good example and um, led, led by example and was a, ultimately someone good to look up to. I never, I mean, it depends on your definition of a superstar. I never wanted to be a superstar. I'm not a superstar. I'm just somebody who's been in the right position um, at the right time. And I, my work ethic, I, I hope, speaks for itself. And the fact that I'm 54 years old and I'm still doing this, um, you know, it's a positive and it's a negative. It's a, it's, it's a negative in that, you know, <laughs> I should leave it to the young guys. But the fact is I can still do it. So why am I going to say no? Okay. Wow. Your, your answer it was very humble and thank you so much for that because it's something that um, I can see your, your heart and everything. And it's something amazing for the young audience as well. It's not about like, yeah, I want to be like, no, no, no. It was just, just like, I want to do the things right and that's it. So congratulations and thank you about that. Thank you very much. Este, aquí la pregunta fue que eh, si recordaba el momento exacto cuando, cuando él decidió o sabía que iba a ser una superestrella y él me dijo, a ver, aguanta, aguanta. ¿Esta onda a qué te refieres con ser superestrella? Porque yo nunca me levanté y dije, ah, voy a ser una superestrella. Solamente hago las cosas bien. Me gusta ser reconocido en mi trabajo y lo sigo haciendo a pesar de los 54 años que tengo. Y sí, o sea, hay una parte positiva y una parte negativa. Y la parte negativa, pues sí, claro que me ponen con, con gente más joven. Pero aún así sigo haciendo las cosas muy bien. Así que ya lo saben, ahí en casita hay que hacer bien las cosas sin importar nada. And now, what has been your, um, your most memorable match so far? Oh, in my entire career? Yeah. Oh, I would have to say uh, uh, wrestling Hogan in uh, the Georgia Dome in front of 45,000 people and having my teammates rescue me at the end of the match. It's a story that I've told many times, and it's a lo it was a long time ago, but it's still the most special time I, I think I ever had in the ring. Okay. Este, a ver, acá la pregunta fue que cuál había sido su match más memorable y él dijo, bueno, primero de todos los tiempos y le dije, sí. Y dijo, bueno, que creo que enfrentando a, a Hogan en el Georgia Dome, eh, que a pesar de que fue hace muchísimo tiempo, él lo recuerda y, y, y fue parte enfrente de, mu de muchísima gente y para él ha sido uno de los más eh, memorables. And now, I forgot something that about their cars. 
So we saw on a GQ interview some pieces of your collection, and we only saw American cars. Is there any reason, or is it just a coincidence? Um, no, the, 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 I'd say, you know, I grew up with American cars. My father owned um, some, he owned a Jaguar, he owned a couple of European vehicles. But to be perfectly honest with you, European vehicles are made for people who are this tall. <laughs> American cars have much more room. And so therefore, it's much easier for myself to drive them. Um, yeah. I, I, I did Top Gear in, in Europe against Anthony Joshua, and I had to drive a Jaguar, and I could barely fit in the car. It's a beautiful car. I don't have anything against yeah. um, foreign or import cars, but um, no, American cars are much bigger, so that's my, de <laughs> that's my default answer. But <laughs> okay. I do have a couple. We have a Porsche, and, um, you know, we've got a couple. We've got okay. a couple. Yes, of course. I mean, you have 37. Of course, you have some cars. <laughs> you have Europeans to have a couple Japanese European cars in there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Perfect. Thanks, God. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not super uh, tall, so I can, I can complain about that. Este, a ver, aquí la pregunta fue, bueno, no fue pregunta. Él estuvo en una entrevista con GQ, eh, la revista GQ, y nosotros vimos algunas de sus piezas de colección de, de autos, y solo vimos coches americanos, y la pregunta fue, oye, ¿qué onda? ¿Solamente te gustan los coches americanos? Y me dijo, ah, ah. O sea, aquí la cuestión de por qué me gustan es porque quepo. O sea, los coches europeos, imagínense, son para ch gente chiquita, y él es un gran hombre, entonces, pues no, eso no les va. Básicamente, esa fue, pero que sí tienen algunos, y seguro, si tiene 37, pues seguro sí. And now, Let's move something. Oh, sorry. So, let's move something sweet. Your mom won a prize uh, for creating an or an hybrid orchid, and she named. Yes, yeah, sorry, Gomer. Sorry, but it's very sweet. Very, very good investigative work you've done. I greatly <laughs> appreciate that. Now I'm I'm humanized. I have a, I have a flower named after me. <laughs> it's super sweet, and we want to know. How do you feel? Or what do you feel? About oh, it's just, I mean, you know, I mean, it's the, the, the love from your mother. I mean, the fact is my mother used to be a United States orchid judge and she traveled the world and she would not only climb trees, you know, in Africa to find special rare orchids, but she would, she was a judge. And so her ability to come up with new orchids and new types of orchids throughout the years I think was unmatched. And so she, I think she named an orchid after every kid in the family. And I, William Goldberg is, yes, it's, there's an orchid named after Goldberg. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> este, a ver, aquí, por si ustedes no lo sabían, eh, su mamá, que la verdad tiene una familia sumamente talentosa, y su mamá eh, hizo una, o sea, se ganó, se ganó un premio por, por haber creado una orquídea híbrida, y le puso su nombre, y él me dijo, oye, a ver, aguanta primero, qué padre que hicieron, o sea, una investigación tan chida, y las, porque me humanizaste, entonces, eh, pues su mamá ha viajado por todo el mundo, buscando especies, se fue a África como buscando especies para poder mezclar, y, y básicamente, pues dijo, claro, tengo un hijo increíble, maravilloso, y le voy a poner Goldberg, entonces pues Goldberg se siente, se siente como lo vimos, ¿no? Y lo sentimos, imagínense que su mamá le ponga una horquilla, su nombre, wow. That's um, the first time anyone's asked me that question, other than that interview. That's, that's <laughs> wonderful investigative work. I, I commend you. Thank you so much. And, and now, talking about uh, our producer, saludos Arturo. <laughs> um, our producer favorite show is uh, Fortune Fire. And he wants to know, how was your experience hosting that show? You know, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. We had, uh, we had three seasons of it. I, I had a wonderful co-host, a guy named Tu Lam, who is arguably one of the most dangerous humans on the planet. And uh, I learned a lot from him, and I learned a lot from doing the show. The, I, I didn't know much about knives prior to hosting the show, but uh, now... I moved to Texas, and so now not only do I know a lot about guns, but now I know a lot about knives, fortunately, from that show. So it was a, it was a wonderful experience. I met some great people, 
and some very talented people. And, uh, you know, you never know. We may come back with that one of these days. Okay. Um, a ver, aquí la, la pregunta fue acerca de que, bueno, nuestro productor Arturito le encanta eh, Desafío sobre Fuego. Y aquí queríamos saber cuál había sido la experiencia. Y dice que básicamente él no sabía nada sobre cuchillos, sobre armas, sobre nada de esto. Pero le digo también que hasta tres temporadas tienen. Entonces, que ha sido para él un placer trabajar con gente tan talentosa, tan entregada. Y pues bueno, esto de también conducir algo... No, o sea, no sabía que era bueno, pero ahora ya vimos que fue maravilloso y van por más temporadas. Okay, and now, let's imagine that I'm your delivery girl and I will shop for your groceries. Which are the four items that I can never forget to buy? Well, you can guess what one of them is. Eggs. I mean, in, yes. I mean, I, I don't know. You cannot say eggs because, my God, I don't want to... It's, it would be like the whole store or something. Here's, here's a secret. I live on a ranch, and my neighbor has has chickens, and I get, I don't know, five, six dozen eggs from him once a week. So um, it's an unfair advantage. So you wouldn't have to pick eggs up, but you'd have to pick up, oh, my gosh, you'd have to pick up steak for sure. You'd fillets, no question. Um, we threw the eggs out. Uh, you have to get sushi. Absolutely. Sushi? Yeah, no question. Um, skim milk, okay, and protein powder. Okay, easy, that's easy. that's what my wife has to get every time she goes to the to the grocery store. Okay, that's great. Very uh, simple. Uh, and and you're you're not a sweet person. You don't like sweets. Oh, that it, 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 I have to be in my underwear in front of millions of people at fifty fifty four years old in two and a half weeks, my darling. Right now, no, I do not like sweets. Okay. <laughs> but okay. but usually usually you know yeah i mean i fortunately i'm a guy who has to eat uh way too much food just to stay maintain his weight so um especially yeah. for an older person or anybody to be able to have the ability to go out and eat just about everything they can and not get obese it's it's a huge advantage but playing football and wrestling it's a disadvantage because i have to work that much harder to gain weight Ok, perfecto. Um, a ver, aquí la... Sorry, I don't know what is happening here. Um, bueno, aquí la pregunta fue que... Eh, ¿Cuáles serían las cuatro cosas que yo no puedo olvidar comprar del súper? Y él me dijo, aquí mi vecino, como vive en un rancho, me da cinco o seis docenas de huevitos orgánicos, ¿no? Entonces me dijo, pero si no se te puede olvidar la carnita, el sushi, también me gusta la leche y la proteína en polvo. Y le dije, oye, ¿no te gustan los dulces? Porque a mí me encantan, ¿no? Y me dijo, bueno, pues a ver, si voy a salir en calzones, pues obviamente me tengo que cuidar también. Pero claro que me gustan, por supuesto que me gustan los dulces. Entonces, eso es algo increíble. And, and now, you said something about the about your that you have to to be in the ring just with a little lingerie or something right but i have to confess that you have an impressive impressive physique what is your secret uh well first of all thank you for being blind uh second of all <laughs> it's uh you know <clears throat> i i have a i have a standard that i like to keep myself to and Um, as I said, again, you try to set a good example for everybody to stay fit at no matter what age you're at. Yeah. And like Mike Tyson, you know, I mean, he came out and did an exhibition at his age and showed that he's one of the most dangerous people in the world still. I, I like to think that I'm the Mike Tyson of professional wrestling. So um, I, 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 I'm addicted to working out like anything else. Um, I'm not vain by any stretch of the imagination, but I try to keep myself in as good a shape as possible because you never know when Drew McIntyre is going to need to get his ass kicked at Royal Rumble. So, you know. <laughs> ok. Este, a ver, aquí la pre Bueno, no pregunta. O sea, esto ya fue de que nosotros lo vemos y la neta es que está súper bien, ¿no? De físico se ve increíble. Y, y él, yo le pregunté qué cómo y me dijo, a ver, gracias porque no estás viendo bien, muchacha. Pero la neta es que me gusta mantenerme en forma. Y, 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 y está padre porque mencionó que Mike, Tan Mike Tyson hace unas semanas estuvo y dio una exhibición y se sigue viendo muy bien. Entonces, es adicto a hacer ejercicio. Ya lo saben, comer bien y hacer bien de ejercicio, porque quiere mostrar que es posible estar en forma a cualquier edad, que eso no importa. And now, you're an icon of the sport, an active legend. 
And here in Latin America, um, we have many members of our audience. Many members of our audience are young and are just getting their feet um, wet on wrestling. So do you have any advice or um, many, many, any message for them? Um, yeah, I mean, no question. Uh, <laughs> As as a as someone hopefully that they look up to, um, hard work and dedication is more important than anything in the world. Obviously, treating other people like you want to be treated yourself is is extremely important and probably the most important. But if you have a goal, um, give a hundred percent of your effort and don't give up until you reach it. Period. End of story. And don't take no for an answer. Oh my God. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Eh, a ver, dice, eh, aquí fue que muchísimos de ustedes quizá no sepan, ¿no? O, o digan, bueno, ¿cómo, cómo, ¿quién es Goldberg? Bueno, aquí está el mensaje de Goldberg para ustedes. Básicamente viene el 100% de su esfuerzo. Trabajen duro porque la dedicación también es lo más importante. Y, y él también menciona que hay que ser buenas personas. Y nunca aceptes un no como respuesta. Eso está increíble, ¿ok? And now, before we go, we need to know something. Who will win the WWE Champion on Royal Rumble? I think 100%, no question, Goldberg is back, and I will show my dominance at the Royal Rumble, period.